Hey guys, it's Christine coming to you live from the hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Woohoo! I'm a minute late. I'm tardy. <laughs> I went to hit the record button and it said, you never created the event for tonight. And I'm like, oh shoot. <laughs> and then it wanted me to reconnect the account. And so it took a minute to do that. So I apologize for being a minute late, um, but I'm here and you guys will soon be here as well. And that's awesome. We're going to be doing the Merry Snowflakes card class tonight. I was thrown off this month. <laughs> Normally, um, I always am doing the monthly class before the, like the sweet bundle class. And for December, I squished everything into the first pretty much two weeks of the month. <laughs> and I kept my monthly class like I normally do. And then what happened is the sweet bundle class moved up. So I really was a slacker on doing the PDF tutorial for you guys. I sent out the monthly one last week thinking that's what the class was tonight. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me yesterday and I'm like, ooh, I better write that PDF tutorial for you guys. So it got emailed on my lunch hour today, you guys. <laughs> so woohoo. Okay, I'm trying to multitask and find the video so I can watch along with you guys. And I, there it is, I'm wearing my Mario shirt. I can see it, woohoo, we've got 17 people already. Wow, hi Feline, hi Sandy, hi Randy, there's Linda and there's Laura. Whew. Okay, so we're in business. Hi, thanks for sharing Sandy. Oh, I think I need to grab my class sign-up sheet. They're sitting over there on the chair. <laughs> I can see them from here. I'll grab them in a second once we get started. Hi Kathy King. Well, can you guys believe it? It's the last, sweet bundle class of the year. It's December. Wow. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. Thanks for sharing. Ann Bellinger. Hi, Donna from Louisiana. I'm just surprised at how fast this year actually flew by. Hey, Karen Wetstein. I just, it blows my mind how fast these months and now these years are going by and every, you know, my mom always says it gets faster. <laughs> so hi, Carmen. Hi, Arliss and everybody else, she says. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, you guys, I did create the newsletter. I got it out yesterday. And what is today's the ninth? Wow. Okay. So I try to do the newsletter within the first week of the month and I did it. I think I got it at the seventh or the eighth. Hi, Judy Bobo. Thanks for sharing, Sherry. So I got the newsletter out, you guys. It was a massive newsletter and I'm almost tempted to pull it up because I feel like I want to just go over briefly some of the things in it. And I think I will do that in a second because I... I think that I'm talk about like the schedule. I it's the new year, so normally when once so at the end December and November is when I kind of do my skeleton calendar for the whole year. Um, and I published the January through June schedule or January through May schedule, and then um, I know that some people were interested in the year schedule, like the skeleton of the year, and I am still gonna put that out there but I wanna just proofread it one more time. Hi, Barbara Moyen. Hi, Linda Brady. Um, so, oh, Feline Printer scavenger hunt today, cool. Uh, so I will be sharing that, because I know some of you, so I took a little poll during one of my videos of do you guys want the whole year, do you want partial, and it was completely mixed across the board. <laughs> so doesn't that just tell you how different and yet similar a lot of us are? Uh, so I know some of you want to plan for the whole year and mark your calendar, and some of you don't wanna um, be overwhelmed with it. So um, hi, Gwen, and um, hi, France. So I, I'm going to publish both schedules. And so right now, the January through May one is out on the Cards by Crispy website under the newsletter section. And I will be sharing the January through December schedule. You guys have to remember though, the paper copy, that PDF copy is always like paper and paper gets replaced with more paper usually. So it's always best to use that as a guide, but always check the events calendar. That is more of my Bible. So like, let's say I publish this calendar, this schedule for the whole year, because I kind of have a template of when I know I'm going to be doing all my classes through December of next year already. But um, what happens if I um, am asked by Tyler to go somewhere or my mom needs help or something happens in my life, right? And I need to rearrange the schedule. Then I will have, you guys will have an outdated copy. So just know that I always change that schedule as it, um, I try to keep it updated, but if anybody would print it off, and um, have an old copy, and then you want to sign up for something, and the day, the day might change. It, it might change. It's always good to just double check with me, or always. So <laughs> that's my disclaimer. So hi, Bonnie Kelly. Hi, Jewel. Oh, you missed 
out on the bingo. Oh, where can you see the project? So, Jewel, there's a video. We watched your card for you, though. So, anybody, whenever we do bingo. So, oh, yes. So, bingo was a little crazy last week. We made it through it, though. And <laughs> so, Kelly always watches people's numbers. So, if something happens unexpectedly, like just what, what happened to Jewel, we watched your numbers for you. And Jewel, we know that you didn't win. We know that the numbers that got called were for other people. So had you won, though, we would have kept your prize for you at the end. So just know that if you ever sign up for my bingo with me, then you don't have to worry about that. But Jewel, you were emailed the PDF tutorial. And also, if you go into the video section of this website of my not the website of the Facebook page, you can watch the video again. So um, it's out there. Hi, Hildenel. So where do we start, you guys? I'm going to take about 10 or 15 minutes and go over things because there's a lot to go over. Um, and then I'll have to go grab the class schedules. So first things first, Kelly did Technique Thursday today. So I'm going to flip the camera down and she called this the Scrappy Quilt Work Patch Card <laughs> Technique. I can't remember all the words and what order they went in, but it was like patchwork quilt card technique and she drew all these little lines on here and it makes it look like it's a quilt work and it's super cute so if you guys want to catch how kelly did this card oh my gosh this bow is awesome kelly does such good cards i love it so if you guys want to see how kelly did this card make sure you watch technique thursday for today okay so that was technique thursday uh so this is what i've got going on oh let's do these cards really quick that means i can clean a little space but these are some Christmas cards I got coming in. Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful bow on the side here. Look at this. This card came from Kathy Malago. I can take your name out now. <laughs> Thank you. And inside, it was so cool. There was a little tree in here. And look at how much effort and time and expertise she went into decorating the front of this card. It looks like she actually hand painted it is how it looks in person but they're all stamps but it looks like such like an artist kind of drew everything so very very cool so that's one card from Kathy hi Deanne from West Michigan this one is from Judy Bobo it's in, like a, a fun fold it's one of, like it's I don't know the exact name but I have been making this style of card for a while you guys I don't ever remember the names of just certain folds but this one's cool because what you do is you it's all about the cutting and the scoring and Super pretty. I love it, Judy. Thank you for that card. This one came from Carol. Oh my gosh, your last name. I always am hard time with last name. Ciorotino. <laughs> Ciorotino. You're going to have to forgive me, but Carol, I, I love your card that you sent for me. I, it's so pretty. I got to show you guys the front of it. Look at that. This was a set from last year, and she put all those little red berries right in the inside. It's so pretty. Very, very cool. I love it. Thank you for that one. All right, this one came from Carmen Melendez. Oh my gosh, you guys. So cool too. You guys gave me some fun folds. I love it. So I called this one, I think you call it a never ending folding card. Um, <laughs> so I feel like if I, and Carmen, if you're watching, hi, Jeannie Parker. Jeannie, uh, Carmen, if you're watching, you're going to have to help me. I always, I thought it was a never ending. And if I bet it's like it, I thought. There's a certain way it goes. You guys, sometimes I don't get things either. <laughs> so don't feel bad when you... Oh, wait, wait, wait. This, there's a, there's a little, like you can see my finger through here, right? So I feel like it wants to fold a different way. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. So now you can go with this way. And so it's like a never ending fold card is what I think this one is. I have made one of these in my life and I don't think I've made another one. <laughs> complicated but that's from Carmen Melendez thank you for that one Carmen this one is from Arliss Canoe so thank you so much for this pretty with the poinsettias this was the um, that plush poinsettia paper from last year and then the merriest moments I think that's in the mini catalog and then one more here is from oh Patty Hintz one of my gals and she's actually close to me she's in Campbell Sport and so she sent me this pretty card with the gold and the evening evergreen. So yay, the Christmas cards are rolling right in, you guys. I love it. So thank you. And your Christmas cards are getting ready. I've got three or four or five boxes sitting over there. My mom worked on them. She helps me. She loves to help me. I think she loves to help me. <laughs> I, I know she does. But so she's got, I think I had about 360 or so Christmas cards that I'm sending out. 
Oh, so she helped me with all of them and my aunt Karen helped make them all. My goodness, she worked on them for about a month and um, I got them last week and my mom worked on stuffing them. So yay, they're going to be going out in the mail soon. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Zaina. It's 12, 15 a.m. Yay. <laughs> Late night for you, early morning. So, okay. It's a never ending card. Yep, Carmen. That's what I knew it was. I just have a hard time like facilitating the never ending movement. <laughs> so, okay. So after we're done with class, you guys, I do have the gingerbread cards to give away. Chen notes who won the Mary Snowflake set at half off. Hi, Mary Ellen from Montana. Um, I have uh, from my holiday open house, I have some prizes to give away. So, but before we do that, I do want to talk about the newsletter a little bit because there's a lot of news in there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of letters and a lot of news. And I'm going to flip down because you guys don't always know where to find things. And I always like to show in case then at least maybe like seeing it again might help with the rememory. So I'm going to flip my camera down and show you where the newsletter section is. So when you guys go into the internet and you search for my website, Cards by Chris B.com, not crispy like Rice Krispies, but Chris B. <laughs> my last name is Bertram. If you go there and you click on those little hamburgers, it's under the blog and the news and then newsletters and files. And that's where you can find the newsletter. So my schedule is always first. That's the um, December 1, January through May. This is where you guys, I put the scavenger hunt. So the scavenger hunt is freshly created for the um, spring catalog. And so Feline said she already printed hers off, but this is where you can find a copy of it. If you click, it's a link right here. And then the other thing is if you go down a little bit more, um, if you want to register for the Winter Creative Escape, that form is here. But here's my newsletter for December. And what you do is you click on it and you either download it or you it opens on your computer. And oh, there's so much stuff in here, you guys. And so I always saw, start with what classes are coming up. And you guys can see like my schedule here. That's like how it looks like on my website. Talk about paper, pumpkin, Free shipping was yesterday, and so we have a drawing. I think nine people placed orders to get free shipping yesterday that were $50 or more, so we'll do that drawing later tonight. I've got the Winter Creative Escape is in here. You guys, Last Chance products are in here. I'm doing a referral and sharing contest with um, giving away a, half off, a mini embossing machine at half off. There's a bingo board contest, you guys, and so it talks about that in here. And then last, but, oh, there's more, Craft Roulette. Um, is going on tomorrow night. So I'm a guest crafter tomorrow night. And then the spring and celebration catalogs are available now. And the launch party is coming up next month. And it just has a lot. The scavenger hunt is referenced in here. The next you stamp sale. Um, always have bow makers and glue holders. Um, gift certificates are always available. So there's a lot of stuff in that newsletter. And I went through it at a high level because <laughs> there's just a lot, right? And, um, you're welcome to look in it, like, and if you guys, if you're a demonstrator and don't write newsletters and you're thinking about doing a newsletter, you guys can always take my newsletter and take the bullet points out of there and, and use it. Hi, Jody Storman. So yes, so that is out there. And I always have a hidden question in there. And I say, to be entered into the drawing for the hidden question, please tell me this. So I have about nine people already that answered the hidden question. And um, just know that's out there. And I always do the announce who the winner is the next month. So, um, yeah. So, and congratulations to Janet Flanagan. Woo! She's the newest Be Happy Stampers. She signed up, I believe it was yesterday. Um, I don't know. The last two days have been a blur. <laughs> <laughs> with working and, and stamping working. <laughs> so uh, Janet, it was either yesterday or the day before, but welcome to Janet. I'm so excited to have Janet on the team. So we have another de December anniversary. So Anna is a December anniversary. Anna celebrated her one year anniversary uh, with Stampin' Up! and the Be Happy Stampers yesterday, the 8th. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So uh, with that too, I also wanted to share with you that the schedule is out there. So I always break it down between monthly classes, the sweet bundle classes, paper pumpkins listed, mystery. So if you're a mystery card fan, you guys can see the, all the dates we have set for the whole year. The club classes are listed. The ink, paper, scissors. Let's just stamp games and prizes. Be happy stamper team events are always listed. And then extras that I have each month. And I know it's a lot, um, but that's how I roll. <laughs> go big or go home or do both is what I say. So, uh, so that schedule is out there. Anybody who's getting a, a catalog from me 
or a Christmas card. I am including a schedule in with your Christmas card. So um, don't worry so much about printing it right now. If you don't have a printer or have to like pay somebody to print it for you, I will be including them in my Christmas card or the, with the, the catalogs when they get mailed out um, this week. So, all right. So I think we're about ready to get started. I need to grab the class sign up sheet. Um, which is like 10 feet from me. So I'm gonna do that and grab the catalog because I wanna go over what we're doing today. Hang tight. Okay, so Merry Snowflakes. This is a sweet bundle class. And so I call it a sweet bundle class because it's not always a sweet. And it's like, in this case, it's a bundle. I picked a bundle from the um, Holiday Mini Catalog. Hi, Dar. And so I picked Mary Snowflakes. Now the thing is, when I pick a sweet class, I try to incorporate the designer series paper, the ribbon, anything that goes with the sweet. But in this case, I didn't have anything that was with the sweet because it wasn't really a sweet. So Mary Snowflakes can be found on page 13 of the mini catalog. So we're, we're still in this one here. Uh, this set is not discounted. So they came out with their last chance list and the dies were not discounted. The stamp set wasn't discounted. And so the bundle is still available. I looked last night, it was still there. So if this bundle gets you going, <laughs> you can still get it. Um, and so I picked this bundle. So this is the stamp set. And then these are the dies and they're like stitched snowflakes. They're really cool. I love everything with stitching, I think. And so it was odd because they already have a snowflake set that's in the annual catalog. So if you are not in love with this, but you, hi, Jean Maxwell. Hi, Ethel King. If you guys are interested in these card kits, I have plenty available. So if you are looking for a set of these and you don't necessarily have this stamp set and you were worried about matching the cards exactly, and you have something else like snowflake wishes or something else, you would be completely good with having anything snowflake related. So yeah, so then what I did is I paired up this um, stamp set with the Peaceful Place designer series paper. So this is a half a pack. It's one sheet of each of the prints from that. And this was like the Peaceful Cabin set. And so what happened is this was the free gift with the purchase. So I always do for this class in particular, if you purchase the bundle as your RSVP for class by the date that I have specified on my schedule, you get the free gift that I have specified on the schedule. So the free gift was a half a pack of paper. And I had four people that registered by buying the bundle for class. And now um, those are Tracy Gruby, and she was here last night. Um, Angela Knutson, and um, she's online, Kathy Dolly Nagari, and Gail Kane. So um, Kathy and Gail will, are for my Saturday uh, attendees. So you guys all will get half a pack of paper for, for that RSVP. So thank you so much for your support with buying the bundle. And so that's always something that I offer, and it's always, you gotta check the schedule. Um, if you always look at the back end of the schedule here, guys, this is where it shows it, Ooh, that there, but on this back end right here, it says featured suite bundle class promotions. And that's where I say, if you order some bundle by this date, you get this for free. And it's the ones that are referenced with asterisks here. So that's how that works. I've been doing that for three years. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, so basically the Mary Snowflakes is the bundle that we're using tonight, kind of coupled with the Peaceful Place Designer Series paper. Hi, hi, Julie Beerschrock. Thanks for sharing. So we have, I'm gonna just do roll call really quick. Sandy Wicklander, Hildenel Vilches, Angela Knutson, Barbara Moynan, Barb Barkow, Leslie McMinn, Lynn Beasley, Deanna Stell, Terry Costin, Judy Bobo, Karen Wettstein, Carmen Melendez, Kathy King, <laughs> Jessica Sumter. The USPS is on my list for tonight because they lost Leslie McMinn's package and I sent her a whole nother set of all the December classes because they lost her package. So when I say the USPS, I don't say that with a smile on my face because they are on my grumpy face. <laughs> They're on my grumpy list. Um, so anyways, um, uh, Kathy Grove, <laughs> Groves, Anna Zastro, Tammy Steckling, and Susan Reed. So Leslie, if you're watching, they said that you need to keep that ripped open package until I get the claim filed. And 
get reimbursement. So I'm hoping that I get my 50 bucks for, <laughs> for and which is half the value of what that was in your package, but it is what it is. You can't sweat the small stuff mom says. So, all right. So that's what we're going to be doing is four cards using the Mary Snowflakes. And we did this class last night and it went very, very good. Actually, I was very, very happy. We made do with 11 people with one stamp set <laughs> and it worked. It worked. It really did. Hi, Elaine. Um, it says it's repeating and I'm not sure if that's your phone or not because I'm watching last night, and, and I'm not repeating. So I don't know. You've, you've always been mentioning that, re Elaine, that it re repeats. And I don't know if it's your internet downloading the video and that it's repeating. But all I can say, if, um, hi, Wendy, is if you guys have issues with the internet, it's the downloading. Get out of the comments. People have said that if they don't watch the comments then it is downloading less information into your phone and the internet works better. So, okay, so let's go over cards that we're gonna be doing um, tonight. Um, these are the four. So the first card I worked on was the pink, and actually Krista and I worked on these cards together. It was fun designing with her. So we went with the gray theme, <laughs> if you can't tell, we went gray, and then it's, um. Oh, Angela, yes, I um, might take you up on that if you want to drop it off for Saturday. <laughs> so, but, um, and um, Angela, I also have something. Oh, I have a catalog for you too. So if that works to pop over, yeah, I would take you up on that offer. Um, I didn't even think of that, <laughs> but I should have. Hi, Madison. Okay, so you guys, we totally went with gray. We went with gray with purple, gray with pool party. So that's Highland Heather, pool party, Coastal Cabana, and Blushing Bride. And they were so much fun. And it was just like, okay, all the different color combinations here. Which one are we going to start with? So, hmm, I always have a hard time picking. Let's go with this one, this one. And I love purple and gray. If you guys know me, if you don't know me, you will learn that this is like my favorite color combination in the world. Purple and silvery grays. Hi, Luann Johnson. Okay, so we're going to do this one first. And you guys will be very happy to know that I made sure I have all my card kits that are here. This is what we're doing the rest of the year yet, you guys. All of these are classes that are coming up. And I do have kits for all of them yet. So if you need to sign up for classes yet, I do have it. Um, oh, Carissa says that it's a blast working on them. Yes, it was a blast working on cards with Carissa. So you guys, these are what we're doing tonight. And then we have the monthly class next week. We have Let's Just Stamp on Sunday. We have um, Ink, Paper, Scissors. And I have kits for everything yet, guys. So make sure you get signed up if you want to do something yet. Okay, so this one's going to be the first. And I'm so excited that I remembered. I brought everything down, you guys. So now I don't have to forget to get anything. <laughs> so, okay. So if you got card kits from me, how it works is you get four card kits. Everything's folded. And each thing for the card is enclosed in one of the envelopes. And sometimes I put the embellishments in one envelope. Sometimes they're all in each their own envelopes. But be very careful always opening up your card kits in case static electricity wants to ship things around or make things fly through the air with the greatest of ease. Um, you could swing by at 8.05. Perfect. Okay. So I got to write down... <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to write down that I got to set a catalog out for you. <laughs> so I would hate for you to show up at 8.05 looking forward to getting a catalog, the new spring catalog, because I don't think I gave it to you yet. Um, and then it's not there. So I just wrote myself a note, Angela. So you're going to have a catalog waiting there for you. Okay. Boom. Perfect. Okay. Um, yes. Dawn loves the purple and silver also. Where do you sign up? So Wendy, however you sign up, um, it's just through me, basically. You can pay uh, for classes via my website. My website does charge a convenience fee for paying with a credit card. All I need from anybody who ever wants to sign up from my for one of my classes is to let me know. Uh, communication. So email, text, call me, Facebook message me, anything that's a two-way conversation. And once I find out that you want to sign up for a class, then we figure out the payment or placing an order to get it for free. So I try to make it as simple as possible for people to sign up for my classes. Um, and, and then when you forget, I'll remind you what classes you're signed up for. So, um, so Wendy, when I flip my camera down, my email address will be there and my phone number. And so just reach out to me and let me know that you're interested. So, all right. So let me flip back down. Oh, yes. I'm so sad to hear about your son too, Jewel. I hope he's doing well. Shirley just um, said a little note too. So we hope he's doing okay. And we're sorry that we missed you last week. So, oh, these crazy things, these crazy times. So the card kit, you guys, will get everything that's here. Nothing is stamped prior, but all die cutting and bossing is done. And so this is, I believe, gray granite. 
it looks more gr brownie. Great granite has a brownie tone to it. And it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And you just burnish the edges. So here you go, uh, Wendy. That's my website to check out the classes, my email address, my phone number. If you guys need to place a uh, order to get a class for free, my host code's here, but it's always on my website as well. Okay, so then what you guys have in your kits are two pieces that are the same size. One is basic white for your inside. One is rich raspberry. Both are four by five and a quarter. And the raspberry one is a mat for the outside here. Hi, Lisa Sharkey. Okay, and that's for our inside. You also have a piece of pool party. And if you can tell here, it's embossed with the snowflakes. You guys, I went crazy with the snowflakes. Uh, well, I should say Chris and I did. We did the snowflakes on this card. We did the snowflakes on this one and on this one. So three of the cards use that snowflake embossing folder. And that's like one of the double ones. So it has the evergreen and then it has one that's snowflake and it's a pair. It's on back order right now, but it should be off in a couple weeks. Oh, you're very welcome, Jewel. The thing with the embossing folder is it's only like three inches wide. So on your card here, you guys can see that there's no embossing on the bottom. And that's intentional, right? Because the embossing folder is only this big. But when we designed the card, uh, we thought that would be quite all right because this ribbon will go here. And it kind of creates the buffer between the embossed part and the, um, the smooth part. So I know people sometimes have a hard time emboss using the little three. I should go grab it, you guys. I'll show you this. Give me 10 seconds. I'm going to go get it. So what I mean by when I say it comes as a pair, these are appealing to people who have this, the mini boss embossing machine, the SCAM, the stamp and cut and emboss machine, SCAM. It sounds stupid, right? But that's the abbreviation. Uh, so the little SCAM, the stamping and cut and emboss machine is a little baby. He's only, it's only three inches wide. And so this folder then, when you put it in here, it's like you're like, oh, I want to emboss the whole thing. Well, you could line this back up and do some embossing like this, but sometimes you'll get that little line there and that's a pain in the butt. So the thing is what we thought was, well, let's cover up that seam with ribbon and then you won't know that the embossing folder was only this big. And this is the pair, it comes with this awesome fern one and we use this a lot with the stamp stack cards. So that is the embossing folder. Now those are on back order, they're not available. You guys, I don't know if you caught the memo that Stampin' Up! changed their policy for back orders. Um, as soon as an item becomes unavailable, like, like out of inventory, they actually turn the item off and you're not able to add it to an order. They used to um, allow up to a thousand back orders before they turn the item off. And those back orders got so big, like the expenses associated with back orders got so big that they just couldn't do it anymore. So. I hope it won't be like that forever, but that's why you guys are probably seeing a lot of items not available to add to your orders because of that. So, okay, so I'm just gluing this mat to this mat. Now, I didn't do it in class and I didn't do it on this um, sample, but if you guys, for game night last week, we did this card and we sponged over the top of the snowflakes with the ink and it kind of made them pop. If you wanna do that, with this card, you could definitely do that. So it would actually pronunciate the snowflakes a little bit more, okay? So grab your tear and tape, and <laughs> so so all you guys that signed up for this class and got it, the PDF tutorial, I am so sorry. I generally send your PDF tutorials on the Monday of the week of class, right? So class is tonight, and I would have normally sent it Monday, but in my head on Monday, I thought it was the monthly class tonight. And I thought to myself, oh, well, I sent the monthly PDF already to people, so I'm good. And then it dawned on me, I think Tuesday night, that I'm like, oh, it's the Mary Snowflakes class this tonight. <laughs> so you know what I was doing yesterday on my lunch hour was writing the PDF tutorial. Hi, Frankie Canada. So that's why it got emailed then <laughs> today. Oh, uh, yeah. So... Sorry about that with the little tardiness on that. Um, the Let's Just Stamp, anybody who signed up for that, I got that PDF tutorial written as well. So that class is Sunday afternoon. And I think I have two kits left for that class if anybody wants to sign up for it. 
Um, and the PDF tutorial is already produced and sent out to everybody who signed up for it. So I did my tear and tape sandwich with um, the ribbon. And now I'm just going to adhere this layer onto the card front. <laughs> Yeah, Judy, I, that's why you got both right away at the same time, because I'm like, oh, just do it, get it done, cross it off the list. And then I don't have to forget to do it tomorrow or Saturday. <laughs> so, all right. So in your kit, you guys, you got an extra snowflake. Hi, Denise from Colorado. And I don't, I feel bad if Anna's watching, because <laughs> I think Anna might have cut these snowflakes, or maybe my Aunt Karen cut them. Um, the, the sizes for the mounting papers, the bottom one is four by five and a quarter. The blue one here is three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. Um, the snowflakes, you guys, in your kits, you got, um, you got an extra snowflake. I accidentally had all of these snowflakes cut in white instead of gray and two white snowflakes looked too white. <laughs> so instead of sitting like with all these snowflakes extra for the rest of my life, I put Every, so my, my mom actually put the extra snowflake in everybody's kit. So you have these three snowflakes in your kit plus one more white one. You can choose to use it or you can do something else with it, but that's why you have an extra white snowflake in your kit. Um, so they're called mats, Frankie. So you call them mounting papers. They're actually mats. My first mats are always, I would have to say four by five and a quarter. I generally don't stray or deviate from that. Um, and then my second mat is generally always three and... 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. That is my common mat. If you're not a sixteenth type of person, like if you don't like to go to the sixteenths of the inch, <laughs> cause you know, that's hard sometimes. You could do like five by three and three quarter and that's completely fine too. I just like a little bit less of that razzleberry showing. So I'm grabbing my pool party. Hi, Brenda Loveless. I'm grabbing my pool party ink. And what I'm going to do is stamp off because if you look at that, how dark that is compared to this one, you can see that first strength would be too pronounced. So I stamped off and then I'm going to stamp a few snowflakes right onto my label. The label comes from the tasteful label dies. I think I need one more up here and um, tasteful label dies. So that's a cool one. So I'm going to do that first, but then on my inside, as long as I have the pool party ink open, I put a snowflake right in the middle and I also did that one at a lighter strength because otherwise it kind of competes with the sentiment. So I'm just going to stamp that kind of right in the middle and that's it for the pool party. So grab your Razzleberry. If you don't have Razzleberry and you have something like Blackberry Bliss, that would definitely work too. So this is Season's Greetings. So we're going to do that one. And I had class last night, so I don't know if I need to re-ink any of these or if they made it, <laughs> if they're going to make do. So this is going to go right on your label. So I have a hard time with white on white, so I'm just going to go and move that piece of paper out of the way and try to stamp that. I'm going to leave that marinade for a second and grab the sentiment. So it says, may the happiness of family, the joys of friendship, and the warmth of love surround you this season. So I am going to practice because I always like to see how the stamp stamps straight. Perfect. Okay. Um, if that would be a little bit crooked, then I'd know to compensate for it. But now I'm going to try to hold it as straight as I can and let that set for a second. And there we go. We've got our season's greetings for our label there. I think that's it for the Razzleberry ink. Give that a second. That's good. So then we've got that little snowflake peeking out from behind the sentiment. And I think we can assemble. This one is actually a pretty easy card to put together. So we'll put some liquid glue on the back of that. And then these have dimensionals. So we're gonna put probably four on this one. And then I did pop up this guy in the middle. This guy, he's probably right on the corner. We'll hang a little bit right on the side there. And then this one right about here. So the ribbon, I don't generally put adhesive under my ribbon when I tuck my tails behind, but with this ribbon, I am going to take and put one little mini glue dot kind of 
in the center here. Otherwise, it's maybe a little flimsy and that label will want to pull up. So I am going to just put one little glue dot right there so that that will help secure the ribbon. I noticed in class last night that a couple people needed to do that to give it some more stability. All right, so we'll pick all those off. And then we're gonna, this guy prepped for our glue. So this is our inside. So you guys, these liquid glues are amazing. But I will tell you over the last six months, I've had maybe a dozen of them that have been weird. And I guess all I can say is they're, they look like a little snake. Oh, I have Angela's here. So Angela just had one and it happened to her. Stampin' Up replaces them. No questions asked. And I actually have hers in the garbage here because I threw it away. She put little unhappy faces on it because she didn't want me to accidentally use it. But it's the weirdest thing. It like comes out like a snake. I'm like, do you guys see that? Like, it's the weirdest thing. So if that ever happens to you guys, if you ever, ever, ever get a glue from me or through me from Stampin' Up, like that you get it on an order that you place through me, like you just reach out to me and I will help you. Like that shouldn't do that. There's something that happened along the way. I can't tell you what happened, but the only thing I can think of is heat or cold or something affects it. It's like molecular genetic makeup of the glue. I don't know. I'm just talking like a scientist, but I'm not one, you guys. So it shouldn't do that though. So you saw how the glue comes out and it's really fluid and liquidy. That's how glue should be. So I just wanted to show it. So Angela, thank you. It was like Play-Doh. Yes. So thank you for bringing that to me so I could show everybody that. That is not a good thing. And I actually had uh, in one batch, I ordered like eight or nine glues in one sitting, like one order, and all of them had it. So something happened to that batch. And Angela just had one that happened to her, and I've had like two more in between somewhere. So I just put a little liquid glue on the edge that's going to overhang here, and then the dimensional was on the other side. So we're just adding those snowflakes. Now, this is where Stella comes out. Sue Volts came over on Sunday for the open house, and she wanted to see the Stella in person. <laughs> it's so hard to see Stella in action because the, the camera just never shows justice, how glittery a Stella pen can be. Basically, Stella is a glitter pen. And so we're just putting a little glitter on and I need to rehydrate her. She, uh, she's getting a little empty. <laughs> All right, Jean, we'll catch you later. Aren't you happy to see that Stella wasn't out on her hot date? <laughs> so I am gonna actually, this is a little floppy here, so I'm gonna actually put one more dimensional underneath on this corner here and catch the paper there, and now it's stable. Okay, so in your kit, you guys, so the, the four cards, these two cards used opal rounds, and I put all the opal rounds in one card, and then this, these two used diamonds, and so you'll have to hunt for your, your johns and rhinestones to find, figure out which kit they're in. I can't remember at this point. So your opal rounds, though, I've got, I think you've got a total of five for this card, and then three for the other card. Hi, Barb Johnson. So we're just putting a couple of these opal rounds right on your card. But dazzle it up, guys. Okay, there we go. One left here. And then I'm noticing this guy here. So you guys, I generally put things down with limited adhesive. And then I'll see if they need more. Like this guy, we only put one in the middle. But I feel like he could use a little bit more. So I am going to just put one more right underneath that top and that will help keep him a little sturdy. So I don't know if you guys, oh, you can see Stella. Okay, do you see these little speckles here? If the light catches it just right, you can see the little speckles. That's Stella doing her job. Okay. Oh man, I think we're done with it. <laughs> oh, John is asking, how do you recharge Stella? So John, um, I'm gonna do a really quick show here. What you need to do is Get this little black thing out and refill it with a uh, bowl um, rubbing alcohol. I did, or Kelly did, I don't remember who did it. There is a tip Tuesday on, we called it rehydrating Stella or giving her Stella CPR. So Dawn, what you have to do is go to my Facebook page, Cards by Christine, and in the search, you need to search for, hi Millie Kindle, you need to search for Stella. And you can watch a video on how to rehydrate Stella and add, 
Some people do a little water um, rubbing alcohol mixture. Some people do all rubbing alcohol. I wouldn't do all water. So right now in your Stella pen, it was a solution. So it wasn't very liquidy like water. So if you're gonna use rubbing alcohol, you just have to be very careful because it's more fluid. And if you squeeze it, it's just gonna go broop right out. So, okay, so we've got those guys clean and we're ready to mosey on to our next card. All right, let's get this away. So we picked, which one is next? I think we're gonna do this guy. Okay, all right, so let's see what we got here. This one is a thick, so, I, <laughs> so when Chris and I were working on these cards, we made a lot of hot dog style cards, but I realized after the fact that when I cut all your kits, I cut a lot of hamburger style cards. So your card bases are more like the last one, okay? All right, you're very welcome, Don. So you guys, for you, whoever got this class with me, your card bases are all more like this style, like the hamburger, okay? So like stocky and thick. <laughs> We're not long and skinny. Okay, but the material is always the same. So you've got a thick white card base and this one, mine is 11 by four and a quarter, but yours is gonna be five and a half by eight and a half and it's gonna fold open the same as like the last one. But regardless, take it, fold it in half, you're gonna burnish it. It's already folded in half, but make sure you burnish your edges. And we've got Coastal Cabana here. So the inside doesn't have a mat. I generally do not matte the inside when it's white or vanilla. I always use thick cardstock, so thick vanilla or thick white. It just makes the card sturdy and less flimsy. Then for the outside, I've got Coastal Cabana, which is your normal four by five and a quarter, and then the Smoky Slate is the three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. Okay, so those will go there. Your little DSP strips are one by three, so very economical for paper, because it ends up being a three by three, and you get 16 of these out of one 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So that's super cool. If you like the plaid look, you could do the plaid look. If you like, I love the snowflakes. This is my favorite pattern paper out of that whole pack. Uh, so it's one by three. And then your little strips here, Laura's favorite one. Yes, this one's so pretty. It looks to me, this looks like having um, your wall with three picture frames staggered hanging on the wall. <laughs> that's what I thought of with this one. So your design, I mean, designer paper is one by three, and then that means these strips are one and three sixteenths by three and three sixteenths. So if you're not a sixteenther, you could have done that eighth inch, you know, that quarter, you know, so a quarter inch. But I liked having a little less blue around for the Coastal Cabana. Okay, so you got those three and three. In your kit, you also have some pool party sheer ribbon and some gray granite shimmer ribbon. And then you'll have a pearlescent snowflake a coastal cabana snowflake, and then a strip like this for your sentiment. And it's long, and so you guys can trim it to how we you need to. So let's, oh, I forgot to talk about one thing here. Hi, Bobby McPherson. Are you moved yet, girl? I know that you posted a couple weeks ago that you had sold your house, but I thought it was a month and so it's not quite, I bet you're still living at your house. I'm curious though, I think of you. <laughs> it's not easy moving out of a house. <laughs> so the last thing on here I forgot to mention is this background. So that background comes from a background stamp, you guys. It's called dry brush, okay? So how do you use a background stamp? That's what we're gonna do. So what I have here is the background stamp. I do not generally ever peel the paper off. I don't ever mount these on that big, humongous block. It's too much for my hand to hold this. So what I generally do is I do upside down stamping with a background stamp. And we're using Smoky Slate, which is way down here. So Smoky Slate. If you guys had basic gray, that would work too, but I'm gonna do Smoky Slate. So this is easier for me to hold the ink pad in my hand than it is to hold the stamp. So I wanna get the fuzz off of there, I think, there, okay. And then this is called upside down stamping. <laughs> so, cause the stamp is upside down, right? So you're gonna ink this up. Be careful because you can get lines from the ink pad. Sadly, no, new house won't be ready until February. We'll move out at the end of the year and so we will stay with family, okay. So there you go, February, got it. Now I have it in my head. So 
in case I need to mail you something, right? <laughs> well, right, your Christmas card's coming. So it'll go to your current house <laughs> and you're still there, so that's good. Okay, so we ink that up and what you're gonna do is put your paper down like that. And now though, you could go like this with your fingers, but I generally like to grab a piece of paper and just put it over the top. And now I can just massage it. <laughs> this is a good massage, but I like to do this. Put pressure all over. Okay, now what happens when you pick this up, you've got first strength on here, but you could see if you like second strength. So just flip it over. You gotta get it lined up. You can see that there's edging that's darker. That is still first strength. So you wanna get this lined up right in the middle of where you had the first time sitting. And then you can go back now and do second strength. And now you can pick which, which color strength you'll like better. Okay, so as you use an ink pad, um, the ink gets removed from the pad and then it's not as dark. I put snowflakes instead of the big stamp. So I didn't have that. Yes, Angela, that is perfect. So what Angela said she did is she put snowflakes as a background on this gray piece instead of this brush, brush, dry brush stamp set because she didn't have it. So here's the thing. You got that side, which is first strength, and you have this side, which is second strength. And you can see one's clearly darker than the other. So that is going to get moved out of here, back here. And now what you can do to figure out what you like better is you could set this on here and then put these. And in this case, it looks a little washed out. You might like the little darker one better because it has more of a contrast. And so I like that darker one better, but I wanted to show you because in case your ink pad is really juicy, your second strength might look better because it's a little lighter. Okay, so let's get glue happy. So flip over your designers. I have the snowflakes background stamp. That will work, Judy. I think that's a fabulous idea. Okay, so you guys, I like to, once I have the glue bottle open, I like to get everything glued <laughs> that I can in one false swoop. So we're gonna do this. You can see I'm hardly using any glue. You do not need a lot of glue. This craft glue is a perfect glue to work with paper. Um, it's now picking these up. <laughs> that is what the problem is. Okay, so we're gonna go with this one first. What's awesome about liquid glue is you can wiggle this around until you get it exactly where you want it. Okay, so let's get this guy on here. And then you can wiggle it. You got about five to 10 seconds, right? <laughs> Depending on how much glue you put on, but you can get it to exactly where you want it. Now this guy, and as these sit here, the glue starts to dry too, so. Just want to get them on there as quickly as possible. Yes, Luann asked if you could swipe your ink pad to get the wood garnish look. Yes, you definitely could. I am not so good at that. <laughs> so anyways, anything that you could do to just create some sort of a textured background is what will help. I should have shown you what it looked like without having a background. It looks blank. It looks like you need something. So Anything to create texture back there will help with that gray. Okay, so now we can flip all these over again and we're gonna line them up with glue. Um, so we're gonna get that one, that one, this one, <laughs> and this little guy. Okay, so this one will go onto our card base first. And then my trick with those panels is I start with the middle. So they are varying heights. Well, the middle one is higher by a hair. So basically what I'm gonna try to do is just center it like left to right here or top, you know, that way. And I'm about a quarter inch from the top. So that, you guys, if you are measurers with rulerers, you can get them out and make them exact. <laughs> I'm an eyeballer. <laughs> so I'm eyeballing this as I go. Um, I have a little bit more space here than I do in the middle, and that's what I kind of planned for. And this one is going to go right about here, and it's not rocket science. So, okay. 
There you go. Oh, Louie, that wasn't a question. It, it was a, a statement. Yes, definitely. I, I completely agree with you that you could um, do the swiping of the ink pad. Yes. Okay. We have some stamping to do. So let's get stamp happy now. So we have Coastal of the Cabana, and we're going to use Basic Gray for a sentiment. So the Mary Everything is part of that stamp set, because the stamp set's called Mary Everything. So let's grab that. <clears throat> well, these are your red rubber foam stamps, so you don't have to worry about necessarily having the foam mat underneath, but I am still gonna practice to see what happens, okay? And you are gonna be trimming the left and the right side at a, like a, a banner, and not a banner, but like a diagonal. So let's see what happens. Oh man, I did good, I like it. What's on the inside? Okay, we got a big snowflake and a sentiment. So I'm gonna use basic gray for the sentiment, which is here. The ins I'm like, where's my mat? <laughs> did you guys see me hesitate there? I was like, I can't find my mat. Okay, but I'm gonna practice here too, just to see once how that one stamps. Okay, I'm going for it. I'll put that right near the top, centered left to right. May your days be merry and bright, and may all your Christmases be white, is what this one says. Holy Moses, that's good. I like it. And then our snowflake. And this snowflake, if you wanted, you could put it in the center. Or if you like the look, it's up there on the top corner. But if you do put it over the sentiment, I would stamp off and then do it. And I think that looks kind of cool, having it right over the top of the sentiment. So I like that. Okay, done, done, boom. What's left? Okay, grab your banner here, your sentiment. I'm just gonna trim off this end at a diagonal, and I'm also trimming this end at a diagonal. And I like to flip up my end of my banner on the, the end that's kind of hanging out, and then the left end is actually, I'm gonna glue it flat. So you could do tear and tape, liquid glue, and I'm gonna kind of put this guy, it's centered like that, okay? And then our snowflakes, what I did for them, I should say we, <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris and I did these together. So when I say I or we, it's like, it's interchangeable, right? <laughs> so this guy is gonna go on here and then I use another glue dot. Guys, I trimmed my nails and they're short, so I'm not used to them <laughs> at the length that they are. Okay, so that guy, and I am actually gonna use another one. If you wanna pop yours up with dimensionals, you can, but I thought I like a glue dot. So I'm gonna kind of set this so that the one snowflake banner end comes that way. This one, it's kind of like, it's coming out of the Mary here. Okay, you guys, I did not forget about the ribbon. I'm doing the ribbon last, and I'm gonna show you exactly why I saved it for last, because I didn't know how it was exactly gonna go on. So it's I saved it for the end. Okay, so you have these two pieces of ribbon. The one is gray granite shimmer, and what I'm going to do is take a glue dot, <clears throat> excuse me, and put it right in the middle of the ribbon and fold it in half, okay? When you fold it in half, pinch it together, and you can see now that it's staying by itself, okay? So now we're gonna take, I'll show you this close up. They're just kind of like hanging out. It looks like they're coming out of the snowflake and the sentiment. So now you're gonna take two blue dots and I'm gonna have one on each side. So this side and that side. And what I'm gonna do is layer my pool party ribbon kind of over the top and then gonna kind of bring it at a diagonal so that it's coming out the back end on this side, okay? Squish it together good, right? And it stays, right? Now you just need one more glue dot and that glue dot is gonna go at the top and now what you're gonna do is kind of like gently lift up your snowflake and you're gonna tuck that up in there like that and it's kind of right to the left of your your sentiment, and now you can finagle your tails a little bit because that 
mini glue dot action is pliable, right? So you're gonna cut it tucking out of your snowflake like that. I want this little guy to come out a little bit more. Okay, there. So the, the glue dot is pliable. So I just kind of like pulled this one off to the left and it kind of just hung out there now. Once you get it situated, then you're gonna trim your tails. So I'm gonna trim that guy and then this one. And then we'll put this one going that way. And it, honestly, like you could have them all different or have them all the same. I'm actually gonna do one that one, the, leave the one that way and do those others like that. Okay? If you want them shorter, you can make them shorter. If you want them longer, leave them longer. Just, just don't butcher too much off of it because it gets to the, be the point where you, you, you can't keep cutting off, but um, you start shorter, you know, start with a little bit and then keep doing a little at a time. Okay? So that's the trick with that ribbon, right? It's not, you know, once you see it done, it's not as hard if you do it that way, I think. And then what's left on here, the bling. So we're almost done with this sheet of rhinestones. So I'm so excited. So we're gonna grab that guy and the biggest one goes in the middle. And I've got a medium one that's gonna go over here. And then I have to grab some of these little guys. I think I gave you guys five for this card so that you had your odd number. Three was just not enough. So again, I don't know if your diamonds went in with this card or if they went in with the other card, but okay. So let's see here. We're almost done with that sheet. Maybe hopefully the next card will use those up and maybe we won't. <laughs> we'll probably leave it with like two left. Okay, that's it. So, oh, I like it. <laughs> it's so fun. Now, like the snowflake is only adhered with one or two glue dots, right? So if you need a little bit more stability, you can, but like this guy is on here pretty tight. Just give it a good press and I don't think he's going to go anywhere and like press down there and then these little tails won't go on anywhere for you. So like it's good. It's solid. You've got your inside stamped. Um, it's really funny because I actually, <laughs> oh, I was going to make this into a birthday card. Um, I actually had uh, Connie last night in class wanted to make it into a birthday card. So I found this happy birthday. And if you want to know, in case you want to make yours into a birthday card, and you have this set, it's called Artistically Inked Happy Birthday. It fit there perfectly. Look at that. You couldn't ask for a better stamp to fit right in that same. So if you guys are done with your Christmas card, uh, this could have been, and then Banner or Best Year has um, Wishing You the Best Year Yet is a great sentiment for the inside. I meant to do that with this card and I completely forgot. So if you guys help me remember, we'll do it for the purple card. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll remember, I promise. Mm, I can't promise, but we're gonna try. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's our card. Oh, I just noticed on this guy. So I was going back here and I noticed that this is a little like floppy there too. So I'm just gonna put one more dimensional and then he'll catch the paper. When he's just hanging out on the ribbon, the ribbon isn't so stable, but as soon as he catches the paper, he's stable. Hi, Tammy Steckling. Thanks for sharing. All right, so you guys, we got two cards, and we have two more to go. All right, next we're going to do the Blushing Bride in Pink. So Bonnie Lesbrunt's love this card last night. She loves the pink, the baby pink with the gray. So I like the pink with the gray, and she loves the no, she likes the pink with the gray, and I love the purple with the gray. I think that's what I was trying to say. So, all right, so this guy here, there's no stamping on the outside, you guys. There is a little bit of masking here, actually. So, um, Angela, this might be another one where you took your snowflake stamp, or Judy Bobo, take your snowflake stamp and stamp around the edges. But mm. I didn't do that. I actually used this mask. This is in the mini holiday catalog. Hi, Kara. This is in the mini holiday catalog, and it comes as a set of four. So there's a snowflake design. There's a stripey design. Whatever that is. Oh, it's the gingerbread icing, I bet. It's like, oh, I guess I have never used it. And then this one. <laughs> That's also part of a pattern from the designer paper. Hi, Kathy Jackson. All right, so 
these masks are like six bucks for the four of them. And if you ever wonder what they're like, it's like when you were putting stenciling on your wall <laughs> at home in your bathroom. And <laughs> that was a thing, I think. <laughs> so that's exactly what this is, is stenciling. They call them masks, but they operate just like a stencil. Okay. Oh, Barb, I have extra. <laughs> you, if anybody wants these cards, you guys, I have a plethora. I thought that there would be a lot of people that would want these snowflake cards. Like, I made 70 kits, you guys. I think I only have 40 consumed. So, I have a lot. So, this kit class will be available. This, this, it's not a kit class. This class, these card kits will be available <laughs> as an alternative if you don't want anything that's current, like, coming up. I'll have these kits for a while. So, I don't think I'll get through all 30 of them tonight. <laughs> so, Barb, we'll catch you later. So, Barb Johnson, if you are interested... I do have these available. This class was um, $20 mailed or it was free with a $40 purchase, I believe, using my current host code. Okay, let's grab it. So, oh, Feline wants a set. Yay. <laughs> we can make that happen, Feline. I'm, I'm going to pick a post-it note so that I don't forget. So, Mary Snowflake kit. Perfect. Okay, I love it. One down. <laughs> <laughs> like 30 more to go, 29 more to go. Okay, let's move this. So what do we have in our kits, you guys? Again, I apologize. I gave you guys hot um, hamburgers, not hot dogs. <laughs> so if you're wondering what a hot dog and a hamburger is, this is definitely hot dog. <laughs> the hamburger is what you guys got in your kit. So it looks the same when it's all done. It just is how it opens. So grab your bone folder, burnish your edge. I know that your cards are already folded, but they aren't burnished. Um... Judy Bobo, your Coastal Cabana snowflake didn't die cut well and messed it up trying to pick the little extras out. Um, oh, Barb Johnson wants one. So, Judy, do you happen to have the... I don't remember if you got the die set or not. Um, Barb, I've got you down here for one of these. Um, Judy, I can always put a little die cut snowflake in a kit. Like, I think, um, I think I have a catalog going out to you. Like, tomorrow probably I could always throw in a little die cut snowflake for you so just I think you want this right here I think is what you were asking for so I just need you to confirm that <laughs> I like the hot dog too I just don't always think to when I'm cutting card bases in mass quantities I I look at the card like this and I always just instinctly do a hamburger so Judy just text or just message me and tell me if that's the one that you want I think that's what you want so all your pieces here. Let's just set everything off the side and we'll go over that in a second. I'm just going to set mine over here because we're going to work on this because then I can move this out of the way. So how I set this up for class last night is everybody put their card in underneath here and then I used washi tape to hold it down. It's the bluish one. Okay, so we're going to do Judy Snowflake. Coastal. Yep, I can get that. So just make sure you look for it <laughs> in your package. I'll try to put it like in a plastic something or other or an envelope. Okay, so once you guys have your mask over the top, it does not make any sense to work in the middle area that gets covered up. So I told everybody in class, Lena, concentrate on the outer perimeter. And we're using smoky slate and a blending brush like this. Okay, you can use a sponge dauber. You could use a sponge in and of itself that we used to have. The main thing is you're adding color and you do not want your cardstock underneath to move or shift because you know what happens if it shifts? It creates a second pattern starting. So what you're gonna do is kind of hold it with one hand so that as you're adding color to the area, it doesn't shift your card. And when you use Smoky Slate, it's gonna look like you're not adding any color whatsoever, but you are, trust me. You can see I'm just going in light little circles and I'm going to lift this up for a second here without, I'm going to keep my hand here and I'm going to lift up. You can see it's starting. Oh, you guys can't see that. It's got like a glare. Hang on. I'm going to hold this like this. You can see it's starting to put the snowflake there. So here's the thing, you guys. You can go lighter, you know, keep it lighter. And if you want it dark, you can always add color. But if you make it dark to begin with, you got to keep it dark, right? And you can have it varying. Some could be a little darker, some could be a little lighter. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of hold it and twist it and get the other side now. Okay, 
It's like anything, you can always add color to make it darker, but once you have it, it's like a hamburger. Once you cook it, it's cooked. You can't go back to getting it pink, right? <laughs> so if you overdo something, it's kind of hard to go back and reverse, reverse. So what I would suggest you guys do is if you're gonna use a mask like this, just check it and see is like, oh, does that look good? Does it look dark enough? Do you have enough color? This guy looks like he could use a little more on this side. Now, if you don't have this mask, it's not the end of the world. We talked about using snowflake stamps and said, see what happened there? It's cool. I actually got a little darker there. I got a little lighter there, darker, lighter. It's perfect. I'm good. I like it. So that's how you do the background. Now, Angela, Judy, Bobo, you guys are talking about doing snowflakes as a background. So your perfect opportunity to pull out your snowflake stamps and use them to create a background. Okay. Okay. So what else do you have in your kit? You have your white, it's four by five and a quarter. That'll be for your inside. You have these three mats here. And um, I know that for your kits, I did change it up a little bit. Your pink is Blushing Bride and the basic gray is here. But I know for your guys' kits, I for a fact, you don't have a big piece like this. You actually have it cut off. And that's because the designer paper actually covers up the bottom portion of it. So you guys will only have like a piece that's this big. I, I thought I'm like, oh, might as well save a little paper because you really don't see it anyway. So what we can do is we can start gluing. We'll get glue happy here. So what we'll do is we'll flip. And if you guys want to add some color to your snowflakes back here, you could take, if you have like a light pink ink or a gray ink, you could kind of sponge over the top and give depth to your snowflakes if you wanted to. Now, remember, you guys don't have the full length here, uh, and that's because it gets covered up. So I'm going to put a little glue on the designer paper and the white. And put that big snowflake on the top. Okay, so we're going to put this guy on our basic gray. And remember, yours is not going to go all the way to the bottom. That's quite all right. Oh, you could. Feline just having a really good idea. She said you could create a mask with the snowflake dyes as well. So you guys have a little piece of that designer paper that goes from end to end. So you see you have a gray margin all the way around there, but you don't have it on the bottom. And that was intentional. Okay. And then what you can do is we need to get some tear and tape. Hi, Chris Niebaum from Iowa. Grab your tear and tape. And we're going to um, prep the back of this with some tear and tape for our ribbon. Oh, I forgot one thing. We have, in your kit, you have this piece of the white glittered organdy. You have some mesh. And you should have, um, I believe we cut 8 or 10 inches. Let's see what it says. Maybe it doesn't say. I think you guys got 8 or 10 inches of the, the organdy here, right? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut it down to size, right? In your kit also is this piece of silver. It's your sacrificial lamb. Because if you'd put this ribbon on here, you see the seam right through it. And it's not that cool. So this is your sacrificial lamb. And what you're gonna do is just put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that. And now that's gonna cover up your seam like this. Okay, so it should be the same width as the basic gray paper. Okay, so we need to get that down because now when you put this, it actually looks super cool. Now, just remember, your piece of white organdy is enough to do this part plus tying around here, okay? So I'm thinking that I lost <laughs> part of my ribbon somewhere along the way. Uh, so I gotta go get... I don't see it in my kit, so I gotta go grab some ribbon. Hang on. So when you cut your ribbon, you only need it to be long enough to just tuck the tails behind. So when you cut it, cut it, be conservative, because you wanna leave a little extra for tying the ribbon, okay? <laughs> if you have a buddy at home to help you with it, it really did help. Last night we did the buddy system. It helped to have two people, but I'll show you, you can do it with one person. It's, it's completely doable. So now from the front, I like to always hold this from the front 
and then flip my tail over and it'll catch it'll catch the tear and tape as long as I've got it in the right spot. And then we're gonna grab a couple more pieces of tear and tape and secure them over the top of our ribbon. And then that is going to get adhesive on the rest of it. And that will go on our blushing bride. Oh my goodness, these, so that organdy ribbon, that organdy ribbon, it's like cotton candy to me, it's so pretty. It pulls out pinks, it pulls out the iridescent, it's so cool. So it really brings out the pink in this card, love it. Okay, so we, you should have something like this amount left. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your mesh in half, the mesh is in the annual catalog. So you're gonna fold it in half. Now this is where if you have the buddy at home, one of you could, like one person could hold it like this and then the other person would come around and wrap it. <laughs> we don't really have a buddy here, so we're gonna make it work without a buddy system. So I'm gonna kind of hold it with the one hand and <laughs> finagle it and I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. Oh yes, I can. Okay, so what we're doing is I just, Oh, you know what you could have done? You should have, you, you could have done this too. You guys, if you don't have a buddy here, I know I had it, but I'll show you. Look, you could do this and get this already prepped and a loose knot like this. And then you could take this and take the folded end and kind of stick it through there. And that will work too. But <laughs> I did, I guess I didn't want it to work that way. It could have though. I feel like I was more successful finagling it this way. But if your husband's at home, have them hold it. If your daughter's at home or your son's at home, have them hold it. It might be the easiest thing. And that's what we did last night in class. We Now, if you're good and you can get it on your own, go for that too, because then you don't have to wait for anybody. So we did this on the cutest Halloween cards too, back in October on that one card with the green and the, the black. So, all right, now what you have to do is kind of finagle so you got your little loopy on the top and your loose ends. This is what's gonna get kind of just adhered onto here. And you can always pull this if you don't want a big of a hump or rabbit ear up there, you can kind of make it looser. Okay, that's that part. But this can get flipped over and I'm actually gonna use dimensionals and pop these up. This is the perfect time to use up some of these ends. So we'll use them. And one more for good measure right there. All right. Now, you have a few loose snowflakes in your card kit. One is actually cut, you guys, from the designer series paper from that peaceful place. And that snowflake is from this Mary Snowflake set. The other snowflake isn't, though. The other snowflake came from this, this set, that dies that go with this set. So, all right. So now this is just going to get centered on the front of our card like that, and this is the trick for this. So you see that this one has a big opening, a gaping hole right in the middle. If you take your big dimensional, it actually fits it perfectly, and it's like a hexagon, okay? So perfect, right? Then that is gonna get put right in the middle here, and now you have all that extra dimensional goo, and this one will stick right to it. You don't even have to add more adhesive. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Perfect. Then we need a, a glue dot. So grab a glue dot for this, whatever you want to call that thing. And we're going to put that off to the side. So glue dot on there. And then figure out how it will lay the best. I think I'm going to go like that. Squish it down good. Okay. I might stick one more glue dot in there. Hi, Donna, joining late. Okay, I'm gonna stick that little glue dot right there. Now you can kind of fluff it up and grab your scissors and you can trim that tail, that tail, and you might not even have to trim the end. I gave everybody about four inches, so you probably won't even need to trim the end of your mesh at all. And this one has the opal rounds on it. So you guys should have three left. So one goes right in the middle. 
And then the opal rounds come in two different sizes, but it's really hard to tell. They're really not that big of a difference. So just, I got one there, one here. And ah, don't they look like cotton candy too with that card? Oh my gosh, the pinks just all go together. Then that's our outside, right? And we're not done, we got an inside. What does our inside look like? Oh, season's greetings. Um, well, I guess we'll go with it. Why not? So this guy's clean, so we'll need the base. So I used the basic gray for the ink for these. So this will be basic gray. And then blushing bride for the snowflake. And it's the little snowflake now that we used on the very first card. So get that ready here. Let that marinade, perfecto changeo. And this one, I'm gonna do it at full strength up in the corner. So up there. Now I don't always decorate the bottom. When I'm putting snowflakes and butterflies and bees and all that good stuff on the inside of cards, then I put them near the top. So flipper, still skin that over. And so the flipper still skin, you guys, that comes because I had a cat. <laughs> and uh, um, my boyfriend at the time would always flip her over because <laughs> she would lay on the bed for hours on hours on hours and hours. She wouldn't get up. So he would go and he'd flip her. So she would, and he'd always tease that. So she wouldn't get bed sores. And so I always called it flipper still skin her, like flipping her over, like, but like flipper still skin. <laughs> That's where that comes from. You guys, I've been saying that for a long time. <laughs> So um, this is what happens when the inside gets really dark and it's really excessively dark. <laughs> so that's gonna, I put that on the inside and when you put the mat in, you can't really tell how crazy it is. So, but that was the inside of my card. Hi, Kathy Groves. Okay, all right, you guys, we got that one done. Our pretty in pink, very cool. So card number three is finito, es finito. So let's put this one away and last, but certainly not least, whew, my purplicious card. Okay, so let's see what we got going on for this bad boy. And I, you guys, this is a classic thing. I stamped it like this. And I'm like, oh, dang it, Bobby. Like, that doesn't work. So then you know what? You flip it over and you do it the right way. <laughs> That's how it goes. See, I do that too. All right, so this one. <laughs> and again, you guys, we'll have a hamburger and not a hot dog. My apologies for giving you the wrong kind of meat. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, in your kit, you guys have your little snowflakes. This is from the silver foil. In that silver foil pack, there are three different types of silver foil, and this is the more purpley hued one. So you should have those two in your kit. You should also have a piece of ribbon, and your ribbon is together and it's folded in half. And it's about 10 inches. I cut mine apart already, just, and I'll show you how to do that. You, oh man, oh frights. Um, so you guys all have yours punched, um, done already because I punched all yours, but I'm thinking, I got really clever in my head thinking, oh, I'm going to show you guys how to punch it in class. And I don't know if I have the punch in my possession down here. I'll have to go over and look over on the counter over there. Otherwise I'm going to, um, wing it. Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> this is me trying to like show you guys how to do things, <laughs> but yours are already punched. It's with the I think it's the treasure tags pick a punch or something like that. And then you guys have a banner that's already die cut and the banner is already done for you. So that's the snowflake embossing and the banner end. it's two inches wide and about four inches long. All right. So you guys have your two mats are the same four by five and a quarter, your basic white and Highland Heather basic gray for your base. Again, you guys will have five and a half by eight and a half. And then your designer paper is from the peaceful place as well. And it is five and a sixth by three and 13 16. So there's no reason why we can't just glue this right away uh, down. So let's get that glued. So it's one less thing to have floating around on my desk here. So that'll be our first step, get that. And then the banner, let's do that right away. <clears throat> so this is another one where if you wanted to hover over the top to give the snowflake some dimension, you could add color. Um, 
Dar likes the Coastal Cabana and the pink and the gray cards. Nice. Okay. The purple is going to be pretty, though, too. I promise. So here's this one. Let's get this glued down. Generally, I like to have my banners fluttering in the wind, but in this case, we have all this activity down at the, this area, so we're just going to make it flat and go with it. So our banner is flush at the top here. Now, you guys, with your ribbon, what you're going to do is cut off as much as you need just to flip your tails underneath, right? So that one's going to be for the... Um, it's not enough to wrap around and tie a knot. I am not that kind of a knot maker. Um, I like to make my ribbon secure behind and then attach it. So you guys have enough to do it in this kind of fashion. So I'll show you how to do it. Um, it is definitely not enough to wrap around and then tie the knot. This is just, this is easier on my mind. So what I do is I put tear and tape back here and then it's ready for my tails to get kind of flipped. So I kind of hold it from the front kind of eyeball where it is on the card here, and then just flip your tails behind, okay? And then a little bit more tear and tape. What trimmer do you have? Your cuts are so straight. So I use two cutters, three cutters, four. I actually have four cutters in my life. Um, when it comes to making my card bases and card mats, I actually have a um, paper cutter that came from Germany. And it cuts up to like this much paper at one time. It's like industrial strength. But when I am using um, like cutting D, I don't use that for DSP. I only do that when I have lots of like when I'm prepping for cards. I'll be honest, Laura, I did a, a tip Tuesday on cutting paper, I think. Cutting designer paper. And I showed this. And you guys, I don't promote other brands usually, but I, I'm not going to lie to you. I use this. It's a Fisker's guillotine. I absolutely love a guillotine. The guillotine cuts amazingly straight, sharp lines all the time. And Stampin' Up! actually has this little baby guillotine. It's not for sale, but I got one of these uh, for being a demonstrator. And so when I have little things like this that I need to cut, I'll use this little baby guillotine. Um, and the other thing that I use quite regularly is also Stampin' Up!'s trimmer. Now, this is more of a small scale. You guys, I'm like a large scale kind of cutter, so... I, depending on the job or the task at hand is what determines the cutter I'm going to use. Um, and I use all four of them just depending on what I need to cut. So um, definitely though that guillotine by the Fiskers, I've been using that for probably, I, I think in 2007 is when I bought my first guillotine Fiskers cutter. I have three of them. As they wear, the, as the blades sharp, um, dull, I use them to cut like my magnetic sheets or like acetate or things that aren't paper. So I'm always then got a new one and that one always uses with paper. And then now I have one down here and I have one upstairs and I have my old one. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, I have three of them. Okay, so the inside, let's do the inside is in basic gray ink and then our purple Highland Heather. So let's do that. Um, a sentiment. Oh, I was gonna make this into a birthday card. I almost forgot, but I just remembered. So let's swap this around. So the sentiment on this one is going to be happy birthday to you. And we're going to stamp that in the center. You know what? No, we're not. We're going to do wishing you the best year yet because the outside is going to say happy birthday. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the stamp never treats me well. It's <laughs> That's why. I remembered it went crooked one way, and I didn't remember. And you guys, I didn't practice. So uh, it needs to come down, uh, like, a lot. So that's what practicing is good for. So we're going to go like that. The armed paper trimmer is better, is what Lynn says. Yeah, um, there's there's quite a different, a lot of different trimmers out there. Oh, that's much better. Whew. Okay. <laughs> much better uh this depends on what you want to use um let's see here for a snowflake so now though i liked so if you guys are doing this as a christmas card with that long sentiment that snowflake in the middle looks super cool but i'm not going to do that because this sentiment looks different so i'm going to clean that and we're just going to put the snowflake one little guy up there okay and we'll just stamp that off. And I'm, I'm buying myself time figuring out what I'm going to do for that banner. <laughs> Can 
Can you tell I'm like avoiding it <laughs> till the bitter end here? Okay, so flip that over and we're gonna put this on our inside. Dinner is done. All right, Feline, we'll catch you later. Oh yes, and see you on Craft Roulette tomorrow, 6.30 Central. Yes, that Craft Roulette, my third one, you guys. I did so good the last two that they didn't even have to do a prep time with me this week. <laughs> like, like uh, kind of make sure I got my, my, my stuff together. <laughs> all right, so, all right, what is last on here is <laughs> we definitely, I wanna figure out, I'm gonna go over and see if I have a different punch that can punch this. I don't know if I brought it down. Give me 10 seconds, I'm gonna go look. I don't have a punch down here that is exactly like that. So you guys aren't going to get to see the punch action going on, but I grabbed a kit <laughs> from class <clears throat> and we're going to make this similar happen, the similar pattern happen. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab my scissors and we are going to make it look exactly like my sample. So I wouldn't recommend this at home. I definitely would uh, use a punch. Oh, you know what? Why am I doing that? I'm just gonna use this one. <laughs> I can punch this later. Okay, cool. See, think smarter, not harder. All right, so here's our label. This is exactly what you guys have in your kit. <clears throat> Boom, see, we can make it work. So I'm gonna do happy birthday and I am going to practice though. So, <clears throat> so this stamp was from the Artistically Inked stamp set. And because I wanted to make a birthday card I chose happy birthday instead, and that fits perfectly on this label. Okay, there you go, right? <laughs> so now I can actually take this and put this in the punch, and it'll still punch it perfectly fine. All right, see? Awesome. Okay, so Highland Heather is my color here that I'm working with, and happy birthday is our sentiment. So what I'm gonna do, now this ribbon too is another one where I think I'm gonna put a little glue dot to help secure it because then the label won't be flimsy on me. So we're gonna put this just right underneath there to hold it. I don't generally put the, the any kind of adhesive underneath ribbon, but sometimes I will use glue dots. And then what I've got is this tag is gonna go partly on the ribbon, partly off the ribbon. So I actually like to use some of this end stuff so cut it the length that you need it. And we're gonna put it towards the top here. So it's gonna catch the paper, but it's also gonna catch the ribbon. And I'm not putting any kind of dimensional at the bottom because it's just gonna hang out here like that. All right, I didn't forget about my little ribbon on the side. I always do that at the end. Okay, then these little snowflakes are a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna grab my little dimensionals and put one in each center of those. Oh, you guys, Stella made her one appearance and then she went away. So we're going to bring out the cards and Stella again. So we're going to put one there and this one I kind of have hanging over the top of the tag a little bit. And then you have your little schnibble of ribbon left. And what you should be able to do is slide that under. Now, I want my tails to go a certain way and I always depending on how I fold this. Okay, here's the thing. Grab a glue dot. This is what I recommended to people last night. Grab a glue dot and put it right where the, the knot is gonna go. Because now when you tie this and you squish it, it's gonna stay put. Okay, so it's this go like this. I'm trying to figure out which way I want my tails to come out. Okay. So I'm just tying the leftover, the leftover, the leftover ribbon and where you had that glue dot, right? That glue dot is right there. Push down and that will really kind of stick to the ribbon then. And then I also like to add another glue dot underneath the tails. And so that's going to kind of get them to stay put. And then one more little guy up here. Now this ribbon does fray a little bit. So you can see like my end over there, it does, it did fray a bit. 
So that's part of this ribbon's natural genetic makeup, I guess. Grab your ribbon scissors and we're gonna trim off our end here. And then you can trim your tail over on this side. Good. Now, I really like putting that glue dot underneath there because this ribbon would otherwise maybe want to come undone, but because that ribbon or that glue dot is there, the ribbon's going to stick. Okay. And we have some bling and let's see what we can do for Stella. Um, the ribbon is really shiny in and of itself, but you could definitely Stella your banner is what I would say. Kind of go over that. The Stella needs a little help too. She needs some Stella CPR. You guys, how long have you been watching me do the lives? How often do you see, like these are the same Stella pens that I've been using probably for like the last six months. Fray check and put the ends of the ribbon. Oh, good idea. Fray check. Yep, you could add the fray check to the ends of your ribbon and then they shouldn't come undone. Now, let's see if we can get some of these gone. I have a big one. That's gonna go in the middle here. And then a medium one that covers up the dimensional. All right, and then, oh, you guys, there's gonna be one left. <laughs> that's how it works, that's how it rolls. Okay, so we'll put that guy down here. <sighs> one lonely little soldier is gonna have to go to bed tonight by himself. Okay, so let's, oh, those are big ones. So let's grab some little ones. So I'm pretty sure you guys got five for each card for your diamonds. And then the opal rounds was like maybe eight of them, I think. So, alrighty then. Let's see what we got here. Happy birthday to you and wishing you your best year yet. Love it. My purplicious and silvery gray card came to life. Okay, so we made it through our Merry Snowflakes class, you guys. So if you really enjoyed these cards, I have kits available for anybody that's interested yet. So which one is your favorite? <laughs> I always like to ask. I know that Dar said she really liked the blue ones. Thanks, Karen. I'm glad you liked it. So I don't know. Um, you know... I really like this pink one. I like the purple one. I like them all. This one was super easy. It was a really cool layout adding the snowflakes. But um, yeah, you guys know I'm partial to the purple. And I love the layout of this one. I love the simplicity of this one. And I like the pink and the silver going on with that. So yay. I don't know. I picked them all, right? Is that what you guys always do? <laughs> so you say I like them all. Oh, man. Okay, so we're going to get things cleaned up a little bit and grab a little drink of water and we're gonna announce some winners. Was set, what set is the sentiment that you used for the purple card? Oh, Deb Norman, I got you covered, girl. It's actually from Artistically Inked. This is my, um, my ink paper scissors class that I have coming up that you might end up signing up for yet. I'm not sure, you said no, but you never know. <laughs> There's always opportunity, you guys. This is ink paper scissors featuring artistically inked and this class is coming up December 22nd and I have maybe about eight sets of this class left so it that happy birthday came from this set and then you guys what else is coming up is Sunday is the let's just stamp featuring more snowflakes I have two sets of this one left and hi Nancy and then this one is next Thursday it's the monthly December card class and there are these three cards and I still have maybe four sets of that one left. So the snowflake one is I have the most left though. <laughs> I totally over forecasted, but that's okay. Snowflakes are, um, what's it? Classic, right? <laughs> They're good for a while. The inside sentiment. Ah, okay. Hang on. Best year is where that came from. So wishing you the best year yet. Happy birthday to you. I love the scripty fonts in this one. So, um, <clears throat> so that's where that came from. All right, so these are our cards. I will set them over here. So I still have to do the drawing for the these snowman cards. These were from last week, Thursday. So I didn't do those yet. So we'll ha have these guys all hang out together in harmony over here. And 
what I have for you guys tonight is we're going to announce the winners for these cards. I got to make some room. I uh, feel like I don't have a lot of room here. So we are going to bring all this stuff in and move this stuff out. Okay. So what I have is the gingerbread ink, paper, scissors. You're very welcome, Deb. Mary Snowflakes was the, so this is our featured sweet bundle class. When I do that, I always give my VIPs an opportunity to share the monthly video of me um, kind of showcasing all the cards for the month. And then somebody gets the opportunity at getting this for half off. All right, so that. And then I had nine people place orders. So the item that, where did I set it? Oh man, it's probably over there. Um, I have a prize for that. Oh, it's the honeybee stamp set. I gotta figure out where I put it. Mm -hmm, I'll find it. And then um, for my holiday open house, we had a game that we had to guess how many snowballs were in the, the jar. Nancy Billets guessed 245, and there were 225. Tyler counted each and every one of them because I forgot how many were in there. So Miss Nancy Fancy Billets, Fancy Nancy Billets, you are the winner. You got the bark embossing folder for that. Congratulations. And then Kat, there was an ordering drawing. And Kat, um, Tyler, <laughs> I had you last night. He was here. I had him reach in and he picked your name. So I have a Christmas to remember for you for placing an order. You won that drawing. And then Miss Gail Kane, you, um, everybody had to fill out a little questionnaire on where they're at with their Christmas stuff. Hi, Lisa. It was like, have you ever seen a white Christmas who celebrated Christmas in another country, returned a gift? So, so Gail, he strategically, um, I put all the paper and he pulled out yours and yours was the one that was picked. I shouldn't say it was strategic. It wasn't at all. It was random, but he was your, um, he, so you get a roll of ribbon, Gail. So Tyler did all the picking for me for your prizes for the holiday open house. All right, for, so drum roll, brrr, winner, winner, chicken dinners of the cards from the ink, paper, scissors. Uh, Marilyn Skorker, you are the lucky winner of this card. Your name was drawn for uh, commenting um, on the video. So there you go. You're the gingerbread to my icing. Wait, you're the icing to my gingerbread. So Marilyn, you're the winner of that card. Da -da -da! Patty Stebbins, you're the winner of this beautiful card. So... I can get that. I think I have your address yet. Marilyn, I don't have your address. This one is da -da -da -da! Arliss Knoop. You're the winner of this card. Oh, I definitely have your address, so I will put that in the mail for you. And I think this one was my favorite. So da -da -da -da! winner, winner, chicken dinner. Carmen Melendez. You're the winner of this beautiful card. So I definitely have your address too. So I will put those um, out to people, except for Marilyn. I don't have your address, so you'll have to provide that if you want me to send you your winning card. All right, Andrea says the pink and the purple ones are the best. I would agree. I love those two. Um, then, oh, Amy says she just got those, a set of those two. So this is the half-off bundle. That This was our featured bundle for tonight. And the winner, winner, chicken dinner is Miss Jeannie Parker. You have the option to get this at half off. Um, I will connect with you to see if you need it at half off or want it at half off, but you get first dibs at it. So um, I will connect with you for that one. Um, oh, Arliss, you're very welcome. So the last thing is a drawing, a drawing, <laughs> a drawing. Uh, so I did a thing yesterday that if you placed a $50 order to get it, take advantage of free shipping, um, you got your name in for a drawing for a stamp set. And I have the stamp set personally for myself because I got it during the product purchase premiere through Stampin' Up. And so when I put my order in the other day, I ordered an extra one to use as a prize. And so we had nine people. So we had Susan, Carmen, Sherry, Laura, Dan, Susan, <laughs> my two Susans, <laughs> uh, uh, Karen, Tammy, and Joyce. So I'm going to go get the stamp set, though, because I want you guys to see it. It's all about the bees, okay? I think it's right over here. So give me one second. I'm going to grab it. Oh, yeah, here it is. <clears throat> you can't remember everything all the time. So it's called Honey Bee Home, and I was so excited 
that this stamp set was put into the new spring mini catalog. And so I'm like, oh, I love it so much. Somebody else has to win it as a prize. So we're going to do the, this is my stamp set, right? So I ordered one. So I'm like, nope, you guys don't get mine put all together already. <laughs> so this was my set, but just so you can see what it looks like. So we had nine people that submitted orders yesterday and I'm going to do a random number generator to see who wins this random number generator. We have nine people. And so I'm going to type in number nine. I'm going to click generate and we're going to see who wins. I'm so excited. Okay, hang on. Number eight, Tammy Steckling. Oh my gosh, you are a lucky girl. Okay. So number eight, and you were the last one to put in your online order. Joyce was actually in person last night. So you got your order in like, I don't remember what time it was, but nine o'clock maybe or 10 o'clock, but it was <laughs> kind of way toward the end of the night. So woohoo, Tammy. I know you don't have it yet. So this will be a nice, exciting surprise. And then you can make me a, a beautiful B card that I can put up on display in the hive. <laughs> you don't have to, but it's always fun to get cards. So, okay. Now, the question always is, what did I forget? <laughs> so... Oh, I always have to give myself like 30 seconds to like, like, remember, did I forget anything? What's going on? I guess what is next in my mind, um, tomorrow night is cracked roulette, 630 central. We pop on like at 620 and we fly by the seat of our pants, making a card. That's, you're very welcome, Angela. That's what the craft roulette is to me. Oh, you're very welcome, Tammy. Um, I'm glad you love the set. So craft roulette makes my heart pound, it makes my armpits sweaty, and it makes me like, like, <laughs> like, by the time I'm done, I need an alcoholic beverage to like unwind. It's fun and exciting, but it's a lot of pressure because you guys, when I do my card classes with you, I've designed these cards, I've made these cards, I've done them in class, um, and I um, uh, am very like, keen on what I need to do. But for Craft Roulette, it's like, I have no clue. So whew, so that's tomorrow night, Craft Roulette. And Sunday, I have back-to-back doubleheader classes. Um, we're doing Mary Snowflakes in the afternoon and then the monthly class in the morning. So if you're local and you want to do a class, I've got space. Um, and then on Sunday, you guys, is let's just stamp at 2 p.m. Central. We're going to make those three cards. And then I have my team meeting at 4 o'clock. It's not a meeting. It's actually a holiday gathering. We do a white elephant gift exchange. We have a potluck. We do it via Zoom for all those that are remote, that if they want to join in and see the fun and be part of the fun. Um, I know you're not in the room with us, but we try to make you feel like you're part of the whole love of the room that's going on. And then we're going to do a white elephant. Um, Deb Norman, I got your white elephant gift um, in the mail yesterday. So that's awesome. And um, and that's Sunday at 4 for the Be Happy Stampers, 4 p.m. Central. And then that rolls us into next week. So Linda Hodge, I saw your question pop in about the winter creative escape cards. Oh my gosh, two of them are done. But I'm not going to show you guys one or two cards at a time. Uh, I want to wait till all eight cards are finished. Um, so speaking of the winter creative escape um, so, yep, I just did the drawing for the Holiday Open House. Uh, I announced all the winners. Um, so just have to rewind and you'll be able to watch the video. Just pay attention to what time it is and you can go back and catch it. I announced the three winners. Um, so for the winner, Creative Escape, I do have openings. I'm planning for more people than what are signed up. Like I had it in my head that I wanted to have a certain number register. So I'm kind of going for that number. Uh, I... So if you guys, anybody else wants to register, you're, you still can. There's still openings. Um, registration technically goes through the 10th, um, and I need that for knowing the swap numbers. But I will plan to show all the Winter Creative Escape cards next week. I'm, I don't want to show them until all eight of them are done, and I will show them because they're going to be so awesome. Uh, two of them are done, and so I'm hoping by next Thursday that I can share all eight of them with you. And then once you see all eight of them, then I know that more people will sign up because it's always about seeing the cards <laughs> live and in the flesh, right? So so if you're on the fence and you're uncertain, you know, if you really want to wait to see the cards, just know that if you don't sign up by the deadline, you just can't participate in the swapping that I do. So I have to um, publish the swap numbers to all those that are participating so people can start planning and strategizing their swapping, the cards that they're using for their swaps. So, okay. Um, so watch for that, Linda. Um, I did have it in my head. I know you wanted to know the eight stamp sets that I'm using. I do have the eight different stamp sets um, and I just need to 
maybe just take a picture of it and send it to you so <laughs> that you have them. But otherwise, you'll see them next week. So, um, yeah. I think that's everything then. Kind of recap on what we did. Um, for those that I mentioned or I talked to about getting catalogs, you can watch for them in the mail next week. So um, all Stampin' Up! demonstrators that watch, you guys should be getting your catalogs or have them already. Uh, Stampin' Up! sends them out, out in bulk mailing. If you don't get them by, I think they said the 22nd or 23rd of December, you should reach out to them. But um, you should definitely either have it in the mail already or soon. So um, but reach out to Stampin' Up! if you're a demonstrator and you don't get your catalog by basically the, by Christmas time, I'm guessing. So, okay, you're very welcome, Linda. Um, I know that the rainbow set is one. Um, the Let's Just Sail is a set that we're going to do. Um, see how good my memory is. Um, and Chris, if she's watching, she'll help me because she was helping me with the list. Um, <laughs> um. Let's just sail the rainbows. Oh, gosh. There's eight, there's six more. <laughs> oh, man, you guys, I can't tell you. Um, let me just see. Linda, if you're going to be watching for 30 more seconds, I'll, I'm going to get the thing, and I'm just going to read them off to you, okay? Hang tight. Okay. So, in case inquiring minds want to know, the stamp sets or bundles that I'm using for the Winter Creative Escape are Rainbows of Happiness, that one I remembered, <laughs> Happy Hedgehogs, the Easter Friends, Flowering Rain Boots, Hello Ladybug, Paradise Palms, and Let's Just Sail. And oh my gosh, the Paradise Palms is the one card that we have done. <laughs> so, okay, so just to recap, it was Let's Just Sail, Paradise Palms, Flowering Rain Boots, Easter Friends, Happy Hedgehogs, Rainbow of Happiness, and then Sweet Conversations. That's the last one, Sweet Conversations. So that's all eight of them, okay? So, boom. So, Linda, there you go. You got the list. All right, you guys. I think that might be it. So, whew, okay. I think that's it. Um, I do. I'm a little bit excited. Tyler's coming over. He's going to build a fire in our stout room, and we're going to have a fire. <laughs> Yay! So um, if you guys message me after class and I don't get back to you till tomorrow, that's probably why, because he will hide my phone on me. <laughs> so, all right. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you guys. We'll see you later. Love you. Bye.